Hey everyone, um, we're having another conversation today and we've got the lovely Stephen with us from NHS Guide. Um, and we are just going to carry on talking about our sexual health and our reproductive health. And yeah, see how it goes. So Stephen, thank you for joining us. It's all right, don't worry. You are a NHS sexual health nurse? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Yep. Sexual health nurse. Yeah. Sexual health nurse. Lovely. So um, obviously we would normally bring you in during these little events and these weeks that we kind of focus in on stuff, um, but we can't do that. So we yeah. are following the digital route of what's kind of going on. <laughs> um, and we just wanted to kind of start having more kind of awareness questions um, yeah. and to kind of break down some stigmas. So um, I always start with, because I have my own personal view on this, I always going to start with the question of, when it comes to your sexual health testing, how often should you go and get checked? So, I mean, that all depends. I mean, usually, so there's time frames for, for STIs and things like that. So we would say, we would recommend to get tested routinely, maybe every three months if you've got new partners within that three months. Mm -hmm. If you're concerned about a, a specific episode, then there is time frame. So test for chlamydia and gonorrhea, things wouldn't show up until two weeks after the sexual contact. So we always say, leave it at least the two weeks before you come in and get tested because it won't capture. Mm -hmm. If you want to capture the, just the one sexual contact, then you have to be, has to be at least a minimum of two weeks. And then for bloodborne viruses and stuff like that, there's certain window periods. So we would test you at six weeks, 12 weeks, 24 weeks, depending on what it is. And mm -hmm. um, we would judge that when you speak to you on the phone. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much when you phone, we get, we get your story and then we kind of base the test around that. So, yeah. Brilliant. So there's always it's always kind of different things. I'm always of the opinion that you should, um, after every new sexual partner, but obviously it's like I suppose that time frame of making sure that you're not going in the day after is a couple of but but routinely kind of check if you put yourself at risk. Um, yeah, and if you're in a new relationship, it's always yeah. good to get checked just before you you become sexually active with them, just so you know you're you're protecting yourself and them. Brilliant. Um and. So you were saying there that you can phone up for appointments there. So I, I've mm. always kind of gone down the route of the, the walk-ins um, and, mm -hmm. yeah. and they're available online. But as, how how do people come in and get tested? What's the different ways that they can... So at the moment, obviously because of COVID, we're, we're no longer running the, the drop-in service. So it's purely a, a phone call mm -hmm. initially anyway. So you would phone us in, phone the, the number that's on our website, you would phone the number. You speak to the reception staff, they'll ask you a couple of questions, just answer them the best you can. It's better being open and honest with them and letting them know what's going on with you so we can appropriately place you where we need to. We've got a few different callback lists, so you would get a callback from either a nurse or a doctor mm -hmm. um, and we would, we would deal with you there. If you have no symptoms, we're offering a home testing service as well, so um, that'll be sent to your home address so we can just um, fire that in the post to you and just follow the instruction leaflet and get it back to us as soon as we can. So that's quite good for, for that. That's so good. I did not know that you had started um, started running that. So do you have to phone up for that or can you access that online? So currently you have to phone up for that um, just so that the, the admin staff or the reception staff can ask you a couple of questions. It's important that we know, obviously, sexual partners and things like that to, to offer the appropriate testing and stuff like that. We wouldn't want people to do it online and maybe order the wrong test or, right. or something like that. So, yeah. uh -huh. so if you've got no symptoms more often than not, it'll be a, a home testing kit but yeah it's better to just speak to the reception staff and they'll be able to advise from there and what's is, the that, best is that the the general um sort of sexual health number for your local area or your local doctor um so for our local doctor our numbers on the website i've got it here actually um, if i could find the card so it is 01592 647979 and that just gets us straight through to our um reception staff there might be a better way because we're doing it all online there is quite a better way but you can just hang fire and we'll get to you as soon as we can amazing so um obviously with the when you kind of come in and with that that phone call how much personal information does a person have to give you um and i, I suppose the people are, are always afraid i think of, an, of a positive result but why how much do you information do you need and, and what is it kind of used for and how sort of safe is it so we we use a system called NASH. When we take details from you, it's purely to get you booked on your system. Preferably, would ideally, we'd like you to give your the correct details. I mean, if you're really resistant to that, we can um, you can have an alias and you can give a fake name. But we not only offer confidentiality, but we offer an 
I'm going to say this wrong, anonymity. So when you phone us back, we offer an anonymous service. So when your test results and things get sent to the labs, they get sent with a number. It's only sexual health staff that's able to access your details or know who that test belongs to. So your GP can access their files, um, the hospital can mm-hmm. access their files. It's purely just sexual health staff that can access and know what tests relate to what patient. So yeah, so that's something we pride ourselves quite highly on is the fact that of the anonymous service that we offer, not only is that it's confidential, but it's anonymous. So any details you give to us will be used confidentially and it's purely just to book you onto the system and make sure that we're offering you the, the most appropriate mm-hmm. service that we can at that time. Brilliant. That's amazing. Because so uh, I think sometimes people are worried if they have a positive test then people are going to find out, but actually... Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, this is a, a sort of question I think that is um, comes in quite a bit, I think, when I have conversations with young people, and it's what happens if your test result comes back positive? Because I know there's lots of different things that could kind of come back here, but what's the kind of general process if that is not so good news? So, um... Yeah, so if your test was to come back positive, more often than not, if say you were to get a home testing kit or you were coming here, you would be given what we call a net call card mm-hmm. and you can access your results through the automated telephone service. You don't have to speak to any anybody to get your positive result. Um, so a lot of people will phone in, they'll get their negative result and that'll be that. If you phone in and for any chance that there's a positive result there, um, more often than not, patients will phone us um, and then you'll be again ask the questions by the, the admin, the reception staff, they'll book you appropriately and then we'll phone in and we'll phone you back to discuss the, the treatments um, for various STIs, for chlamydia and gonorrhea. There's, there are different treatments, syphilis yeah. and things like that. There's a various different amount of different treatments that we would offer for those. So yeah, we would have a chat with you on the phone about that and explain in more detail for that. Um, chlamydia treatment at the moment is getting sent to your home address. There are some treatments getting sent to your home address so you don't even have to come in here. Yeah. Um, for, other, for other treatments it is, does involve a little injection mm-hmm. but you'll need to come in for that but we would discuss that on the phone and um, so it all just depends on what what result you get to what treatment it is we would also um take some more details so pat notification that's something that we do here um a lot of patients are quite resistant to giving any details of their partners i don't think it's oh yeah right i think it's just because they don't fully understand the, the process that we follow i mean it's if there's sdis out there it's a public health concern so and main aim is to, to treat as many people as we can with an infection. So if we were to take details, we use those details anonymously again. So we would send an anonymous text to that person or an anonymous phone call just to say, you may have come in contact with an infection, please attend your local service for testing. Okay. Um, so we don't pass any details. If you, if anybody, any details were given to us for mm-hmm. of partner names, we don't ever disclose who's given those details. Nice. It's, it's a good way of being able to have that discussion with people that feel like they can't tell the patient or tell the partners themselves and um, it's a really good a good service that we offer for that but it's just to make people aware that when we do ask for those details it's purely for a public health um, aspect and it's so we can capture as many people as we can yeah i think that's a really really important thing to kind of to hone in on there is that yeah. if you know if it comes back that you have say picked up from the day or something here you don't you can let people that you've been in contact with know without letting them know it was you yeah, uh, definitely. Know, because oh, some, I mean, at some point somebody's given it to to you, so it's somebody it's coming around somewhere. But actually, yeah. be just honest and 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 have sort of you guys send out the NHS send out the the message and kind of uh, look after it that way. I think it's a really good thing that most yeah. people know about. No, definitely. And I think there's there used to be a huge stigma, and I think there still is a big stigma on STIs mm-hmm. and. At the end of the day, it's an infection. It's, it's something that you're caught unknowingly. Mm-hmm. People don't actively go out and have sex with no. people knowing that they have an infection. A lot of people don't have any symptoms at all. So um, it's just about looking after your own your own health. At the end of the day, that's our main aim is to make sure that okay. you're being as safe as you can and your partners are as safe as they can. Yeah, that's a really that's a, a, a really key thing, and I'm, I'm really happy that you've brought that up. And because I think it helps change attitudes as well. Um, and I have been having a couple of conversations with some students last year and a little bit this year as well and it's just that kind of, I think there's still a bit of stigma around the, you know, I know them as the sort of sexual health walking but they're, they're family planning or whatever they're kind of referring mm-hmm. back to and I think a lot of people are 
you tend to you tend to see or i have always tended to see people go in twos mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know taking a friend with you because they're scared to walk into these places and yeah it could be quite nerve i can imagine yeah because you think that everybody who's there is there because they either think they have or have you know some sort of um, sti but actually mm -hmm. those those walking services are about more than just checking your sexual health they're about your reproductive health and mm -hmm. Um, like they're because your 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 general practitioner or the nurse at your GP can't do things like fit in your coils and all of the rest of it. So actually, sort of, do you find that um, you're almost kind of tackling the the attitude of, of the walk-in clinics sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, certainly in terms of contraception, yeah. I mean, there's certain GPs, certain practices that can do contraceptive, routine contraceptive, like the pill and things your GPs yeah. can do. So mm -hmm. it's always good to touch base with your GP first just yeah. to see what they're doing and things like that. Mm -hmm. But certainly we offer a full range of contraceptive needs, um, implants, coil fits and stuff. But yeah, you tend to find a lot of people think that, or they feel like they'll come in and they'll sit down and they'll think that people are staying at them and they're just in for their, their pill yeah. or something actually, like that. Yeah. You're just in for, just in to, to have the, the kind of um, contraception that you can't get at your GP, like the coil and, and your injection and, and, and sometimes the jag, but it you know, depends on which ones you're at. Really yeah, it all depends on, on what your GP offer. Yeah, it's always good to phone them just to see what, what they offer. And if it's something they can, then certainly we, we can offer it as well. Certainly if you're not on any method of contraception, it's good to just give us a call and yeah. we can get you get you organised mm -hmm. as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not sure if this falls under your category as well, but there's a... So forgive me for asking, I might be coming up with the wrong one, but... Um, right. Is a, a home delivery condom service as well. Is that put through NHS Five? Yes, yeah, so a slightly changed. I would have to get back with you on the, the complete answer with that. We were doing a condom delivery scheme. It's through. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's through another team that we work closely with. Um, and the name of the team is totally went on my head. Um, health promotion, health promotion. I think it is the health promotion team. But certainly, um, yeah, I think it's on our website actually. It directs you to to where you can get a free condom delivery scheme. And we're sending them out to your home address. We're doing it for the past year at least since COVID hit. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And um, I think we've covered it at the sort of bulk of questions that have come in. I wonder mm -hmm. if there's anything else you've worked in this job for a while. Is there anything that you would specifically want the students to kind of know that's maybe a misconception or, um, yeah, anything that you, you kind of want a message to get across to them? Well, yeah, I think it's just just to let them know that obviously we are um, our team are great and we're all non-judgmental. It's a really non-judgmental service. A lot of people are coming here and they'll think that they're being judged by telling us how many sexual patterns they've had in the past three months or this or that. But we are purely there to to do our job and to make sure they're being as safe as they can be. Do you know what I mean? If, if people have had fifty patterns in the past three months, then that's that's their choice. Yeah, that's not for anybody to judge. And I think um, as long as they're aware that we aren't judging them for that we are purely asking the questions that we need to ask just so that we can offer them the appropriate testing and treatment and we can work at the timings a lot of people will come in and think why are you asking me this or asking me that we ask a lot of questions but each question has has a purpose and they're in there for that reason we wouldn't ask questions just because i mean always in this we ask them because they need to know yeah and a lot of people will think and they'll come down and they'll sit down and they think they're being judged and as long as they know that they're it's an unjudgmental service that's the biggest thing for us is yeah. We want people to access this service, um, and most people do, majority do, but for anybody that doesn't, mm -hmm. it can be quite nerve-wracking the first time, but I think the, the phone call service yeah. is quite good because it's letting people access the service that maybe hasn't before because they yeah. can just phone us now rather than yeah. having to walk in, sit in a drop-in, because I can imagine it could be quite nerve-wracking sit, yeah. sitting in a waiting room. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So for the minute, people are, just to recap how people can get in contact with you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They can phone that number that you gave me earlier that I am going mm -hmm. to type on at the screen. Um, <laughs> and it's on your website as well. I've got all the information on your website. <laughs> on the website as well. Um, yeah, and we'll put put that information up there. So they can contact via the website, they can contact mm -hmm. via the phone number. Um, and we've adapted just now, the walk ins aren't running, but we've adapted to home delivery kits after yeah. a, a sort of verbal con. con uh, consultation <laughs> um and and yeah so there's still plenty of ways to kind of get in touch and keep on top so if you're worried about anything yeah, absolutely just call that number yeah definitely and we've got our facebook and a twitter site as well sh5 
um, give us a follow and um, we're putting all information there because we are slightly restricted and things that we can offer at the moment purely because yeah. of COVID. Yeah. But any questions at all, give us a call and we'll be able to um, help. We'll be able to advise at least yeah. if we can't do anything else. Amazing. Well, it's been really good having this um, conversation and it's nice that you've captured something so that we can um, refer back to it as and when we mm-hmm. need. And hopefully the next time we do this, it'll be in person and we can get back to, to doing our little having you in and, and mm-hmm. consult with the students face to face. Yeah, no, that'd, be, that'd be good. Get back to some normality. <laughs> <laughs> We're, it's, no, we're nearly there we're nearly there but there's lots of really helpful information there and um like sort of good advice on where to go to navigate in the signs that we're in just now as well so i'm going to yeah. thank you very much for joining me today Stephen. it's all right don't worry about it um, thank you no problem and yeah i'll make sure we put all those things on and make a lot of phone calls soon hopefully <laughs>